How's everybody doing today? Today we are going to talk about something a little bit different. Most of you guys know my passion is marine life, fish, corals, inverts. My other passion, since I was a little kid, has been turtles. I love turtles. Very intelligent reptiles. They have great personalities. They really recognize you. One thing to think about if you're ever thinking about getting a turtle is their lifespan. Kind of like if you're gonna buy a parrot, you need to have a plan for this turtle down the road because some of them live 75 to 100 years. So you're really making a lifetime commitment when you get a turtle. I personally have one at home that's about, I've had them 36 and a half years now. Been with my turtle longer than I've been with my wife. The terrestrial turtles, tortoises, Keeping their cages clean isn't that difficult because it's a dry environment. Sometimes you get some mold around their water bowl. Biggest issue with them is fruit flies. But if you keep on top of it, it's not that big of a deal. Today, we are gonna talk about aquatic turtles. This has been a challenge my entire life, trying to keep an aquatic turtle tank clean. Our main complaint from our customers to keep turtles when they come in is, how do I keep this turtle tank clean? A few ways we've been going about this is, say you've got a 20 gallon turtle tank. We would put a hang on the back filter on there that's rated for a 75 gallon. That will drastically help the water quality, but you're pushing too much flow out of this thing. And with the hang on the backs, you usually have to have the water level too high. So they don't work all that well. Next stage would be to put on a much oversized canister filter. With this, you can have the tank half full. Once again, a little too much water flow. The main problem with these is when you gotta clean this thing. You crack this thing open and it is nasty inside there. But those have been the two main ways of filtering a turtle tank. Here at OSA, if you've come into the store or we've set a fresh water tank up for you, we have gone heavily towards salt water filtration, AKA sump filtration on our fresh water systems. We have had amazing success with that. So the other day we were talking and we were like, why don't we do this with a turtle tank? A little harder than it sounds because with the sumps, you have overflow boxes in the tanks which go all the way to the top. So in order to do a turtle tank, you've got to drill out, which we did here on these dual overflows. Halfway up, we made our own overflow. We drilled about 18 holes in each one of these. It's going to work very well, but keep in mind, now this tank is permanently a turtle tank unless you cut out and replace those overflow boxes which is a much bigger job than it seems. With this cutout like this, we will be able to fill this tank halfway up. I'm gonna have to plumb the returns so they actually come down. The PVC return will be running out and down. There will be four returns on this, so it should give us plenty of flow. We'll have ball valves on each return so we can control the flow on where it's going. This will also enable us to hook up a UV sterilizer. One of the main things with turtle tanks is bacterial breakouts. The UV will help greatly with the bacterial breakout. That happens a lot because aquatic turtles are constantly sloughing their skin off. So your water constantly has that bluish haze to it. And plus the UVB lights you need for turtles are very close to sunlight, hence, algae breakouts with turtle tanks. The big UV is gonna help drastically with that. Another advantage is the lighting. You're not gonna have to use heat lamps with a setup like this. Cause your normal turtle tank, you can't put a heater in the tank with the turtle cause he's gonna bash it around and break it. This setup, you put the heater in the sump just like you do in any other sump tank. It heats the water. This has a canopy on it. The heated water will keep the heat in the tank, hence you don't need to use heat lamps. You will have to use a UVB of some kind. It depends on if you want a spotlight one just over their basking area, or they do make full bar ones. You could run one all the way across the tank. For this build, we will be using Reef Breeder Lumen Bars. We're using the Jungle Sun Spectrum. It's very close to natural sunlight, but we are still gonna have to put a UVB in here somewhere probably gonna be right over this basking spot that we built for them. Okay, now to the setup. The way this is set up is the water level is gonna be right about here. You'll notice most of the wood in the tank is gonna be underwater. 
A lot of turtles aren't comfortable completely coming out of the water. They like to be right below the water surface with just their heads sticking out, but they don't want to swim to stay there. They want to be on something. Hence, most of this, nice flat surfaces they can lay on. Their head can be out of the water. If they do want to come out to bask, there are basking areas built into this. We're using artificial plants in this because if you try using live plants, the turtles will tear them to shreds. That's just what they do. They don't mean to, but cruising around, they're gonna tear them up. Disadvantage not being able to use live plants. Once again, a turtle tank is a very dirty environment. The live plants would help greatly with the water quality. Saltwater tanks, you do a refugium. You have an area in the sump that you grow plants in. We are more than likely also gonna try that in this sumped area. So we get the benefit of the live plants, but they're not in the tank for the turtle to destroy. They're growing in a nice safe area underneath. The rocks we used in this are basically all flat surface rocks, because once again, the turtles like to sit on stuff. And the flat rocks make a stepping appearance. It's easier for them to climb up and out of the water when they choose to do so. Some turtles get very large, hence there's a lot of open space in here for them to cruise around. We didn't want to set a tank up and put a turtle in here and have to redo the entire tank six months from now. We want this to be a permanent home for them. One thing a lot of people don't take into consideration is the water quality of the turtle tank. Like I've been saying, it's cloudy, it looks bad. People just want clear water. Even if you do get the water clear, You've got to keep up with water changes on these because the turtles are constantly drinking this water, so they're intaking the water. If it's poor water quality in there, the turtles end up developing shell rot. They can get lesions on their skin. It's not a pretty sight. So just like a fish tank, you got to keep up with your water changes. I highly recommend you using one of these Python products that has the siphon bulb on it. Getting a mouthful of fish tank water is one thing. You do not want to get a mouthful of turtle tank water. It's, there's some really bad stuff in there. Hence, every time you work on your turtle tank or touch your turtle, please wash your hands. They do carry salmonella. It's not all that common, but it's common enough that you should stay on top of it. Just a little bit of precaution gets you a long, long way. Test the water for nitrates, ammonia, things like that, make sure the water quality is good. It doesn't need to be as pristine as a fish tank, but pretty darn close to it. Another thing with the turtles is calcium. Calcium is very important for their bone development and their shell development. There are several additives you can sprinkle on their food. If you have small turtles, which most people don't, but if you do, the food they're eating is so small, it's hard to use those additives. Companies also make dissolving calcium blocks. You just plop it in the tank, it slowly dissolves over time. The calcium is very important for the turtles. As a tech nerd and a salt water guy, I might hook up a dosing pump to this with some calcium to see how that works. Never heard anybody doing that before, but we like to experiment, try new things out here. This is going to be our display tank in the store. So like I said earlier, a lot of you guys have been requesting turtle tanks and how to build them. We've got the salt water and the fresh water down pat. Now we're gonna try to get the turtle tanks down pat for you guys. If I left out anything or you have any questions, please drop it in the comments. And one last thing. As tempting as it might be when you're on vacation and your child runs up to you with a little turtle that they happen to catch, please do not collect wild thought turtles. It, they belong in the wild. Most species, especially here in New England, are already on the endangered list or about to be there. A wild turtle that lives up in the northern climates, once they have hibernated or once they hibernate every year, it's built into them. So if you try to keep it awake all winter long, it will basically starve to death. If you happen to see one crossing the road, whichever direction its head is facing in, pick them up, move them to that side of the road, a couple feet off of the road, and go on your way with them. Another very important thing is, say you have a red-eared slider and it's outgrown its habitat at your home and you can no longer keep it, please do not release it into the wild. You can find a home for it. There are several websites. There are several reptile rescue facilities that'll take it in. Please do not release turtles and please do not collect wild turtles. Have a great day, guys.